Hi again. So, thank you to those of you who watched my last video. Um, a little bit of info and backstory to my involvement in the making of the movie Cats. So I really, really enjoyed reading your comments and responding and having a little exchange with some of you. I was so touched. I promised you another instalment of the story. So here we are. One of the questions that so many people have asked me or that seems to have come up is why didn't I go into music theatre? Where did I go after doing the Cats movie? And what took me to opera? So there is a reason and da, 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 I've never disclosed it before for reasons that might become more obvious. So winding back, I won the BBC Radio 2 Choir Girl of the Year competition. I was on the radio, I was on a bit of TV and here in the UK. I got a phone call, my parents got a phone call from the really useful company, Andrew Lloyd Webber's company, asking if I would come and sing for the Cats video, which I did, and then the release of the video, and you know the rest. There's me, still at school, very young, singing a lot, with the voice that you guys are probably familiar with. And I've had lots of comments saying that they like the fragility of the voice, but it was exactly that quality that was an indicator that something wasn't quite right. So it was um, interesting and I was there singing everywhere, all sorts of places. Meanwhile, this fragile, very young voice was starting to struggle. It was feeling scratchy and I didn't know if it would work from day to day. I remember one performance and I was supposed to be performing in front of two and a half thousand people in a theater to be broadcast live on the radio with a whole symphony orchestra. And I just didn't know my voice was going to work. It was very scary at that age. And um, there was a lot of pressure. So things were not all quite well. And as it turns out, this fragile, slightly breathy voice was not terribly healthy, not the greatest technique. So I lost my voice. I lost my voice for months. I wasn't allowed to sing. I wasn't allowed to speak. I wasn't even allowed to whisper. And this was interesting at school and you may have gathered, I'm a bit of a chatterbox. All my concerts, all my public engagements, they were all canceled and heart breaking. I was devastated. I only had one year to make the most of my time as BBC Radio 2 Choir Girl of the Year. So this was quite catastrophic at the time. I went off and did Andrew Lloyd Webber's Cats video, the first session, and I had no voice. I had nothing more than this and it just kept cutting out and it was stressful and I was worried so they sent me home they said don't worry come back another day I came back another day and it took two sessions to get that recording done then I went off to go and audition for some music schools and one of those music schools said that they were concerned about the health of my voice this was terrifying to me. My voice was everything. My ability to sing was just so important to me. And I had never known a time when I couldn't sing. So I went off to the ear, nose and throat specialist at the hospital, one that was recommended by, these, uh, by the music college. And they put a camera up my nose, ah! <laughs> which freaked me out at the time. <laughs> But I had this done a few times and they sent the camera down my throat to have a look at how my vocal folds were working. They were so good to me that they put it all on a big screen so I could watch what was going on. And what I saw captivated my imagination. It's really interesting if you're into that sort of stuff. Check out laryngoscopy or stroboscopy, I think is another name, on YouTube. It's fascinating. If you're a bit squeamish, mm. anyway, so there are my little vocal folds on the screen. And I see what's wrong. 
had a little sort of beginnings of inflammation and slight unevenness. It really didn't look that much at all, but the effect uh, was huge. So I was prescribed rest, lots of rest. And I then went also to a fantastic speech therapist. She saved my bacon at the time and she taught me some techniques, which I still use today. So it was quite upsetting for you know the pressure to not know if my voice was gonna work and all this stuff and, and the importance of doing these concerts and not disappointing my loved ones and the people who wanted to hear me sing. And I wanted to make sure that that never happened again. So while the temptation might have otherwise been to go straight down the music theatre route, I wanted to really burrow down and nail a rock solid technique. So I decided to go to music college or conservatoire and study classically. So I went off, trudged off to London, down to the big city, country girl. And I auditioned and I got in to the Royal College of Music. And there I spent my time dedicated to learning technique. I studied seven years full time. I studied five years at the Royal College of Music, one year at the Royal Academy of Music, and then another year, can you imagine, studying opera at the Welsh International Academy of Music with the wonderful artist Dennis O'Neill. By then, I feel like finally, I felt like I had mastered my voice. I knew I was pretty much bomb proof. Even if I was sick, I could still sing. So this is how I ended up pursuing opera. Even when I went to music college, I didn't think I'd be studying opera. It was just one of those things that came into the picture whilst I was studying. And I fell in love with the art form. Now the thing was, I wasn't allowed to tell anybody that I had had voice problems. I was told very clearly, it is career suicide to tell anyone that you had voice problems. My opinion now is these experiences have given me so much understanding and has triggered me to really, really master my technique. So why would I not want you to know that this happened? And it's a long time ago. <laughs> but this is the reason why I went quiet for such a long time, literally and figuratively. It's also why I now have all this wealth of knowledge that I now offer to my students and other people. So it leads me on to the next thing. I have just created my very first singing course. It's only little, but it's packed full of amazing information. So if this sort of thing interests you, I'll put a link on the bottom of this video so that you can pursue it if you like. It's a course on the Udemy platform, but I'm also going to be releasing some material on YouTube with my take on how to sing some songs and different materials. So if that interests you, keep an eye out for those. If it's not your bag, don't worry, there'll be other videos. There'll be some more singing stuff and maybe some more stories. Do let me know your thoughts. Feel free to comment. I will get back to you as soon as I can. Um, I love reading your comments and I love engaging with you. I've been so amazed by the response so far. Thanks for dropping in for the latest instalment and I will be seeing you soon. Ciao for now.